if you're living abroad, but if you're just going to dip and dive into uh, locations for a couple of days or weeks at a time, um, I've got some ideas. Now, I say, are you a traveler or a tourist? Now, there are a lot of people who are, are tourists in the sense that they like to go to a place, see all the historical sites, do all the um, you know checklist of things they've always wanted to see. And there is nothing wrong with that. That's a great way to travel. Um, if you are a traveler, you may have a different approach to it. You may think uh, more slow travel, more adventurous travel, and perhaps traveling without so much of an agenda you know, getting to a place and uh, living like a local. You're living in a place where you can shop at the local market and just you know, maybe stay longer. But whatever your style of travel is, there's some really great places that uh, you can consider. As I said, I've got eight ideas here for you to, to think about. Now, our blogger, Wendy um, Edwardson, wrote this article and I'm kind of going to build on it because she gave some wonderful thoughts and many of the places that she recommended are places that I love too. So I really resonated with her article. So I suggest that if you have a second, just take a look at it and, and read it. Um, but, you know, she talks about this traveler and tourist distinction, but lots of uh, off the beaten path, path uh, places that you can do in either mode. So first of all, she talks about Italy. Now, I live in Switzerland, so I'm really close to Italy. In fact, I just went this week to Lugano, which is on the border, right on the border of Italy and Switzerland. And it's just such a unique um, a juxtaposition. And when you get into Italy, it's a whole new world. And when you talk about the north of Italy, where there's all kinds of gorgeous lakes, you know, Como uh, and um, Maggioni, uh, beautiful Italian lakes that have um, spas and restful places to go and hang out. And... Um, um, you know, like even down to Turin and that sort of part of of, um, of Italy. Lots of uh, to see and do in northern Italy. But don't forget the south as well. Italy is a very long country. And when you get to the south, you start to experience a whole different um, environment. And of course, these are the places like um, Puglia and Lecce, which is one of the t a little towns I visited um, a couple of years ago and I just adored. But the further south you get, there's a more, of course, well, it's just a different feeling. It's a different kind of Italy. And then if you go even further into Sicily, uh, you can visit places like Tormina. I went there just this year on a cruise and, oh, I just loved it. It was so beautiful. It's a medieval town, uh, you know, just really, um, it's, it's in the shadow of Mount Etna. So it's got a beautiful uh, nature element to it, but it's just gorgeous to, to visit. So Italy, and of course, if you want to go even further south uh, into Malta, places like that, into the Mediterranean, that's another gorgeous place to go visit. Uh, there's three islands there and uh, Malta is just English speaking, very, very popular with um, expats. And uh, it's just a nice place to consider as one of your summer uh, retreat places. And by the way, <laughs> travel to me is one of the best ways to make friends. So if you are traveling solo, don't worry, because you're always going to find people to hang out with. You'll go to cafes, you'll, you'll meet them at events, if you make the effort yourself, of course. But they, um, you know, it's a great way to make friends. And if you're feeling a little bit low and depressed at the beginning of this year, planning for travel is such a great thing to do. Even if you just put a couple of dates in the diary, don't even necessarily book anything right now. Just put, you know, thinking about Sicily or thinking about Malta. Now, another place uh, that uh, that Wendy talks about are places where you can retreat in a way that's more relaxing. And she mentions uh, river cruising. Now, I love river cruising. I have cruised a couple of times with Viking and just adored the experience. It is. It's just like you know, floating on glass. And as the world goes by you, um, you know, Budapest to Passau is on the Danube or from Basel in Switzerland up to Amsterdam on the Rhine. And there's all kinds of <laughs> variations on a theme for that. She talks about um, AMA, AMA waterways and the back roads that she's experienced. And of course, there's always uh, my one of my favorite places in the world, Portugal. I only went there once, only went there for three days but I'm still like putting it on my calendar for maybe I'll go back. It's um, it's just beautiful. And the Douro River is unique. It's all, it runs along all the um, towns and cities in Portugal that make port. So you can stop and have little wine port tastings um, all the way along. But that's a really lovely thing to do too. And, you know, you, you can do things like the Nor Norwegian cruises up to the fjords. Lots of cruising can be, in my opinion, 
very calming and relaxing. And, you know, you don't, and, and really, to be honest, you don't have to spend tons of money on this. You know, most um, cities in the United States and Canada and you know, Europe have rivers or lakes near them. And most of them do river cruising or just a boat trip. If you haven't got enough to do a river cruise, just do a boat trip. Uh, we have one on our little lake and it's like, I think, 20 francs and it's a two hours on the water. It's really lovely. Another thing that, uh, another, I think there's three that uh, Wendy talks about is a more adventure cruising or adventure travel. And uh, I did a Norwegian cruise uh, this week, well, it was a year ago now. And um, we saw the Northern Lights. My friend Kathleen and I went together and, well, I really can't even tell you what that was like. It was just amazing. And the Hertie Gruten cruise that we went on was not a luxury line. It was more of a working ship, really, but it was inexpensive. And the trip up to Norway uh, went up to all the way from Bergen to Kirkness. And it was it was fantastic. Wendy talks about this in her article and she calls it authentic travel. And I think that's authentic travel in the sense that, you know, you can just become you can travel, but not uh, conscious of spending a lot of money or having to spend a lot, just enjoying beautiful countryside and nature. And I'm sure you've got some ideas. By the way, if you can think of any while, we're t while I'm chatting here, please let me know because I really appreciate your where you've been that you found perfect for you know your planning for 2020. Multi-generational travel, that's another one that she mentions, which I think is pretty cool. And this is where you go with members of your family, people across generations. And most cruising will allow children. And there's usually activities for them to do if they're very young. There's little, you know, nursery sessions. And then for the older grandkids, there's just tons of cool things to do on cruises. Or Road Scholar, for example, does a whole range of multi-generational multi travel, where you can take your grandchildren to um, NASA, to the Space Center, to learn about rockets and, and uh, science. Or you can go walking in the you know, Yellowstone Park or um, take a creative class uh, in Colorado. Lots of ideas. Also, there's a, a company called Go Ahead Tours, which is also very good for this kind of educational travel. And another one I'd mention is um, Flavors, which is one that I did when I was um, in Leche. It was a cooking class. That was so much fun. Um, we had a great chef and great people. It was it was awesome. Um, she talks about some of their other um, cruising um, options, like the fact that Virgin is releasing a new ship called the Virgin Lady. No, Scarlet Lady, not the Virgin Lady, the Scarlet Lady. And in 2020, that's going to go all over it, mostly in the Caribbean right now. But there's uh, other cruise lines that she mentions in the article that you might want to think about because cruising is different these days. It's just changed. And um, finally, well, I have to mention this one because it's my passion, which is train journeys. Fabulous train journeys. Just look up online, you know, um, tra uh, amazing train journeys around the world. She mentions some, some I've taken in, in Switzerland. Of course, we are blessed with beautiful mountains and trains, the uh, Glacier Express, the Bernina Express. But she mentions the Mexico uh, Copper Canyon train, or of course the Canadian Rocky, Rocky Mountaineer. She goes across Canada. Um, Ireland's, um, is it Grand Hibernian? And also in Scotland, you've got the Royal um, uh, British Pullman and also the Caledonian Express, which goes from London up to, well, I think it goes past the Highlands. It goes past Edinburgh, up, to, up towards Inverness probably. But that's a great way to travel. And of course, the Orient Express. That's on my list <laughs> for like 2025, maybe. It's, it's super expensive, but um, it's, a, it's, well, I just, you know where it goes. It goes from London to Istanbul. It goes through Paris, but it's the train itself that's gorgeous. And there are some amazing underscore trains in Japan. I don't know the names of them, but I've watched some videos. Check those out. So that's just some ideas for you for travel in 2020. If you are um, a solo traveler, as I said, check out the Facebook groups that are popping up everywhere now for solo travelers. You can meet somewhere and, you know, go together. Um, and then, of course, people at Road Scholar, Go Ahead Tours, lots of these, these companies do have, um, a, you know, kind of roommate matching or they help you to, to travel solo. 
It's really, really cool. There's so much opportunity right now for us older women and we're out there. And that's a cool thing for me is we're out there challenging aging stereotypes and telling the world that we are not slowing down. You know, we are making friends, we are connecting with local cultures and having a great time. This is our time.